Hi, everyone. I'm Ronnie. And I'm Jessica. And you're listening to Clean With Me. The podcast where we walk you through cleaning your house. Thanks for joining me. Welcome back to Clean With Me podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to talk you through cleaning a living room or family room, or if you're real fast, maybe you could do both if you have two living areas. So let's get right into the episode. As usual, the first thing I'm going to remind you to do is get presentable. If you're not already dressed for the day, I encourage you to do that. When we're working in a living room or family room, we're not dealing with bleach or anything like that. So you don't necessarily need to be in cleaning clothes. You just want to wear something comfortable yet presentable. Maybe you want to wash your face, run a brush through your hair, put on some makeup, whatever you do to feel presentable. Or if you've already done that, you might want to just light a candle or alternatively open the windows. Um, I have three windows in my living room. So sometimes I like to open the blinds on the sides of the room because I don't particularly like to have the front one open. I don't want to, as my mom used to call it, feel like I'm on display. So um, she probably does still say that, but I usually have those blinds kind of angled upward to where we can see out, but people can't see in. But when I want to let in lots of light, I open the blinds on the side windows that way nobody can see us but it lets the light in the room because to thoroughly clean a room you do want to put some light on the subject we all know that tried and true method of keeping things a little dim if you have someone over unexpectedly and you haven't dusted But we're going to get the dusting done in today's episode, so you want to make sure that your room is well lit. And of course, if if you're cleaning it at night, you can turn on all the lights. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to do whatever you need to do to gear up for your cleaning session, whether that was getting yourself fixed up, lighting a candle or starting your wax warmer, opening blinds and windows or maybe just taking care of some glaring issue. Maybe you're behind on laundry and you just really want to start a load, or you want to at least get your dishes over to the sink area because they're scattered around. But we're not going to talk about the kitchen or dishes in this episode. It is going to be a living area focus does anybody else, this is for you seasoned ladies, Does has anyone else found that as you get older, you get up earlier and earlier and it doesn't matter how late you stay up, you still tend to wake up at the crack of dawn. And I know you younger ladies may not relate to this at all or younger people, I realize a few men listen to the show, but some of you may not relate to this at all. I get it. When I was young, I used to like to sleep in till 10 or 11 on a Saturday when I was a teenager or my very early 20s. By 22, I had a baby. So, But somewhere along the way, I started waking up at the crack of dawn and for a few years now... And it, it's gotten more extreme lately to where you can't really like catch up on sleep if you're up late. And I don't really like the idea of going to bed super early because my kids are still up. And, you know, I like to kind of oversee things and whatnot. But I do end up having to go to bed before the kids 
because I'm just absolutely going to wake up at the crack of dawn. So this morning I am a little tired, but I wanted to get this episode out before I start my day job. I say day job as a figure of speech because I do often record the show in the mornings, so they're kind of both my day jobs. Okay, by now you're ready to start cleaning. The first step in cleaning the living room is removing clutter. And I always tell my kids, pick up the floors first, then clear surfaces. Because the most glaring issue in your living room could be clutter on the floors. If there are only adults living at your house and you don't have pets, you may not have anything in the floor, but for most of us, there's a step of removing a few stray items or more from the floor. If you have small children, this could involve picking up a lot of toys. If your kids are older, someone may have left their shoes out. Um, If you don't have kids, There may be a dog toy. I'm actually recording this in my living room, which is something I don't normally do. When I first started the show, I used to record in the room I was talking about a lot of the time to help me remember what to talk about. But obviously, I talk about the same stuff so much, I don't don't necessarily need to do that anymore. Um, But as we speak... I'm seeing a pair of sandals under the piano bench. I'm seeing a dog toy at the entrance of the hallway. And when we clean our living room, it includes the hallways, hallway too. I call it the outer areas. And my kids know that obviously when you have kids and you're delegating, you have to have little terms for things outer areas pick vac. They know that that includes picking up the living room, entry area, which is part of the same room, and our only hallway. So that's part of it. There could be gaming gear on the floor. There could be just random items that do not be- that do not belong in your living room at all. There are some weights in here. Um, yeah, those, those don't belong. Someone was lifting weights. Now, for the most part, my living room floor is clear. I just mentioned the few items that are out of place. Sometimes it can be a challenge when you just have a few items out of place to realize that you need to straighten up because sometimes we get this mentality where we wait until our house is a mess to clean rather than picking up with it when there are just a few things. And it may sound like common sense, but some of you might need to hear it. I know that I have that tendency to look at a room that has a few minor issues and think that it looks okay and just move on to another room. Like it would be very easy for me to look at this room and think that, yeah, the living room looks okay. And then just head to the kitchen and work in there. But kind of the secret of people who always keep their houses tidy, you know, I use the word clean, But I'm talking about, you know, removing clutter at this point in the episode. And people whose houses are clutter-free, when you visit them, their houses appear clean. You don't necessarily notice whether or not they've recently dusted. But what you notice is that it's clutter-free. And their secret is just that they have a higher standard. They're not blinded to the clutter. They don't walk into a room and think it looks okay when there are a few things out of place. They are observant to those things. They notice those things. They pick up those things so that literally the room never becomes a disaster. 
if that makes sense. So it's important to get in the mindset of not waiting until there's a mess to clean. That applies to every area of your home. Don't feel like I'm judging you if you know, you're know you guilty of this, so to speak. Guilty really isn't the word. But don't, don't feel like I'm judging you because I, I have this tendency too. I have to force myself, for example, to wash three dishes that are in the sink rather than just thinking that my kitchen looks good because there are only three dishes in the sink. The same applies to your living areas. So I, so I encourage you to be observant during this cleaning session and take care of the little things that may not seem like a problem now, but a lot of little things out of place can add up and then it becomes an overwhelming mess. Once you've picked up the floor, it's time to turn your attention to the surfaces. You may have items on your couch that don't belong, but if not, you probably still need to straighten the cushions and throw pillows. There may be items out of place on a coffee table or an end table. For example, right now there's a paper cup that my daughter used to clean her paintbrushes, which she's not supposed to be doing in the living room. But there's a little paper paint water cup on my end table. So that's an example of something that is out of place on a surface. There is a laptop on my piano bench. That's not my work laptop. It's the kid's laptop. And there is a stack of mail on top of the piano. People in my house think that that's where the mail goes. It's not something I really complain about though because I'm the one who handles the bills and mail. So it's kind of my job to just grab the mail from the top of the piano and take that back to my room where I have the bill drawer. And I'll look through that and decide which ones, which pieces of mail need to go into that drawer, which ones need to be tossed. You may have a pile of clean laundry in your living room. If you do, I encourage you to just kind of consolidate that pile into one spot. Make sure it's not spread all over because, of course, you want to be able to clean your surfaces. But I'm going to talk about maybe folding that laundry after the episode. So don't get sidetracked by that right now. So take a minute to clear off every surface. Your, your floor should already p- be picked up, but be looking around for things on surfaces that don't belong. Don't just get used to seeing them there to where they become part of the decor. You may have kind of a display area like a shelf of some kind or maybe the top of your piano. You want just certain items there. I talk about this a lot, but since my piano is in my entryway, that's my launch pad. If I give that piano to my daughter one day, then I will get some other type of unit, a little shelf unit of some sort to become my launch pad because I like to have a little basket with the keys. So that's something that belongs on top of my piano. There's also a wax warmer that kind of moves around my house, but right now it's on top of the piano. There's a tote bag of books that I'm taking somewhere. Um, There's a little decorative truck, a couple pictures. But beyond that, other items are not supposed to be there. So they need to be removed. You may have something like that, some type of a clutter magnet where people tend to set things. You want to make sure that you clear off that surface. The next thing you're going to want to do is dust your surfaces. Okay, 
and when dusting you want to start from the top down so you may want to start with a ceiling fan or fixture I don't know why I never thought of this before but I recently saw a video where they were cleaning their ceiling fan with a dust mop so I could easily reach my ceiling fan with by standing on one of my real stable dining room chairs putting it below the fan and dusting it with a dust mop unfortunately my dust mop is broken by dust mop it's the same thing that I also call a push broom um, but I guess a push broom usually refers to something that is more heavy duty that you might use to sweep your garage but the thing that I like to use in my kitchen is I think called a, a dust mop. I like to use the dust mop first in the kitchen and then a traditional broom and dustpan to clean around the edges and to deal with the piles that were created with the dust mop. Well, another thing you can use that dust mop for is dusting a ceiling fan that's or fixture that's up out of your reach. So you may want to do that. And then, of course, other surfaces that you will be dusting could be your coffee table, end tables. I only have one end table, but I want to get a very small side table of some sort to put next to the recliner. doesn't have to be an exact match to my other furniture, but just... Since that's one of my work, that recliner is one of my workstations, I end up bringing out a bar stool to set my drink and my notes on, which is not that practical, and a bar stool doesn't have much space. So I definitely need a little table. You want to arrange your house not just to be aesthetically pleasing, but also to fit your lifestyle. And since that recliner has become one of my workstations that I spend part of my day in I need a little table there to set things on not permanently but while I'm working and the other area that I would dust would be my TV and the TV stand okay those are the main surfaces but if you're like me you have another piece of furniture of some sort either a piano, some decorative shelves, a stand for your plants. Dust all those surfaces and then turn your attention maybe to your artwork. You do need to, this is kind of a bonus task, you need to dust your artwork and pictures on the walls from time to time. Not as often as you do the tables and whatnot. But you do need to do that from time to time. Of course, I can talk faster than you can clean. I'm just giving you ideas. I'm trying to help you be observant in your living room and just remind you to do things that you may not have thought of. Um, there's a mirror in my living room. So, you know, I, I would grab some glass cleaner and a microfiber cloth and wipe down that mirror bonus tasks I would do in here would be wiping down the double doors that go into my son's room. He has one of those rooms that's on the front of the house that doubles as a den, like it was designed to be either a den or a bedroom. So it has the double doors. It's a common floor plan that you may be familiar with. Those doors are white. They're in my living room. So Wiping those down is important. And then, of course, wiping down my front door and the door frame and the switch plates. I actually have four windows in my living room. There's a skinny window by the front door. I'll tell you a little story about that. One time, this guy showed up on my doorstep with a video camera he had the wrong house. If my next door neighbor's listening to this, I'll be embarrassed. But she was having a party, and I guess he was the videographer. But he was acting really suspiciously. He came to my house, and I was like, no, we didn't ask for a videographer. 
you know, when I answered the door, I was talking to him, but he refused to leave and was pointing the camera through that side window and my son was playing video games in front of the TV and he was pointing a camera at my child. Yeah, I I lost I lost my temper because you know when you tell somebody they have the wrong house or you're not interested or whatever, they need to leave. He did not leave immediately. So at that point I realized that my mom was right about covering a window by the front door. It drives my mom crazy if you have like these skinny windows by your front door. Sometimes there's one on either side. We only have one. And it's designed to look out. Like if your door doesn't have a peephole for looking out to see who's at the door, then there might be glass windows in your door or next to your door. Well, we have this window next to the door. And when we first bought the house, of course, my mom was like, you need to get a curtain for that. You need to cover that up. She was making a big deal about it. And I was like, well, it's kind of a tinted window anyway. Yeah. Once this weird incident with the, the rude videographer happened, I got a skinny, I ordered it off Amazon. I got a little skinny curtain and then I got a little, I got a little tension rod for the top and bottom and then this skinny curtain. So I don't clean the inside of that window very often, but it it's really not getting fingerprinted up because you just slightly move the curtain to look out, but that would be a deep cleaning task would be for me to remove that entire curtain, wash the inside of that window, and dust out that window sill. But I'll admit we don't do much with that because it's just kind of covered up. Um, for holidays, sometimes I do put a little holiday decoration behind that curtain to be seen from the outside, like a little seasonal sign or something. Um, the other windows I have, I have kind of a large window. That's that main window on the front of the house. I typically keep those blinds closed. So I'm not on display, like I mentioned. And then I have two narrower ones that also have blinds and they point out to the side yard that's fenced in. So those are great for just letting some light in without being on display to, you know, the whole neighborhood or strange videographers that have the wrong house. So if I were cleaning my living room right now, I would probably find it overwhelming to dust all three blinds at once. I probably wouldn't have time in a typical living room cleaning session. So I might pick one of the windows that has blinds and dust those blinds. I have a little tool for that. But what I would do is wipe down all three window cells or four if I'm including that skinny window. There's also a large fish aquarium in my living room, but my husband takes care of that. If anything, I might wipe down the exterior glass, but he's pretty good about wiping that down. When he cleans the inside of it, he cleans the outside of it. So I'll give you a few more minutes to dust and wipe things down in your living room. After this episode, you may want to put on a couple of your favorite cleaning songs and vacuum or sweep and mop your living room. Or if you have a pile of clean laundry and you want to sit and fold that, you could do that first before cleaning the floors. If you either subscribe to bonus episodes on Apple Podcasts, which is that purple podcast app that came downloaded on your iPhone, or you support the show on Patreon, then you have access to a recent episode that I made called Let's Talk About Laundry Routines While You Fold and Put Away. So I do have that bonus episode there in case you want to listen to something 
while you're folding and putting away laundry. And it, it just talks about all things laundry, different routines and solutions for laundry struggles. While you're finishing up with your dusting or maybe even starting to fold laundry or maybe you grabbed a broom if you have hard floors in your living room, I'll just talk a little bit about storage solutions. When I was growing up, I don't remember us having any storage in the living room and we didn't need it because my parents had a very strict standard for living rooms and family rooms. I mean, I remember when we didn't even have TV remotes back in the old days, but when I was a teenager, you know, there'd be a couple TV remotes, maybe some coasters, but there really wasn't anything that belonged in the living room. And when we played video games, it wasn't in the living room. We did that like in a kid bedroom or I think sometimes in my parents' bedroom with their TV. I didn't even know till I was an adult that some people have a toy box in their living room. So I definitely re recommend if you do want to keep a toy box in your living room, I understand it. I get it, but I recommend it be a small toy box with only a few toys so that it doesn't take you too long to straighten up and so that your main areas don't get too messy. Even if you don't want to take most of your toys out of, if you have small children, you could either take a lot of their toys out of circulation or you could keep the bulk of their toys in another room and only keep a few things in your front room. That way they have things to play with and you can rotate out different things. Um, another storage solution. Like I said, my parents didn't need any storage in their living room, but for a lot of us, we do. I definitely need a place for gaming controllers. I've got two drawers in my TV stand for that. I have a basket for that. And then I have a matching basket that is for toys for when my grandkids come over but it's a small toy box okay and it's a decorative box that has like wood and canvas and wire and it says just something random on it willow homegrown since some year I don't have my glasses on farms willow farms homegrown since whatever year it's a cute little I guess farmhouse style container and I have two of those that match and those are over by the TV stand. My coffee table pops up so that you could use it as a desk or eating surface but you can also store a few things inside that coffee table and then the one end table I have has a drawer. So there are places to put things and I find that convenient. So if you have things that are perpetually out in your living room, maybe think about some storage solutions. I hope you got a lot done during this episode. Like I said, you still may want to vacuum or sweep and mop. That's an important finishing touch to making your living room look its best or family room. Special thanks to my financial supporters who either clicked subscribe while listening to the Purple Podcast app on their iPhone or who support us on Patreon. I don't expect anyone to support us financially, but I sure appreciate it when someone does. Most of all, just keep listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always... Happy cleaning. I'll talk to you in the next episode.